I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with composers Lily Hayden and Ben Bromfield, any nominees for their song Marriage is a Dungeon from Ginny and Georgia. Lily and Ben, first of all, congratulations on your first ever Emmy nomination. Thank you so much. Um, that you must be over the moon. I'd love to know, uh, maybe from you first, Lily, like, where were you when you found out and how did you find out and what was the reaction when you first found out you are now Emmy nominee, Lily Hayden? Uh, well, I overslept and Ben was trying to call me and when he said, we got it. And I said, really, are you kidding? And he said, no. And I thought he was kidding. He was just, put, and, and, and no, we, we actually got it. So it was very exciting. Um, and we had a, a three-way call with the show creator, Sarah Lampert, uh, and she was, of course, ecstatic because uh, she's been our champion the whole way. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it's, been, it's been a delight. And Ben, that's so cool. You know, there were 80 songs, around 80 songs on the Music and Lyrics Emmy ballot this year. So you both made it into the top six alongside songs from really impressive songwriters, on shows like The L Word, Generation Q, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Ted Lasso, Times Two, and Weird Al Yankovic, the, um, the, the film. Like, that is really impressive stuff. Does that ever occur to you that you, you know, your, your peers really love this song? And so how do you feel about that? I mean, it's it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling to feel like we have come up with something that's resonated with so many people. Um, I know that for me, you know, like like 10 years ago or, or, or something, I kind of wish I could just like go back in time to me 10 years ago when I was just starting out my career and like, you know, it was tough and everything and just be like, hang in there, buddy. <laughs> like, it's all going to be worth it. I mean, that was one of my first thoughts. And and it's it's really just uh, it's amazing to get to be recognized like this. And and among so many uh all, all those those 80 people are are incredible all those people doing those songs and over the course of uh, of our campaign when we when we got to um give workshops to people and it's like the folks in the audience are so accomplished and i've just been so humbled by the fact that they're interested in 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 us and me and in in lily and i and and our influences and and all these these great artists the fact that they are um you know interested in us is is really flattering and humbling at the same time yeah, you know, I um Yeah, I it's been humbling just to be. Yeah, I I think that's a that's a good way to put it. And you know what's really cool is Ginny, uh, there's so much content at the moment. It's very hard for a show to get any nominations. It's just really difficult, especially when you have big productions like Succession and, and all the other ones that take up a lot of space uh, in the Emmy. Uh, roster but Ginny and Georgia has finally made it onto the 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 board the leaderboard as an Emmy nominated show and musically it's so rich I'm so glad that your peers in the music branch recognized the work that you both put into how beautiful the, sh the show is musically so let's talk about the song so marriage is a dungeon I have comments about that and thoughts but I won't say anything because my wife will kill me but um I was thinking that you get this opportunity to write for a musical that the the girls are put or the school is putting on and you know it's a really awesome like uh, uh archetypal show about you know an ugly witch and a leading lady and you get this showstopper so where do you begin when you're when you're given the script you're like okay we're pretty much writing a broadway show now what do we do <laughs> what do you what what's well, yeah talk, talk me through that well, for me, it was important that we that it not just be a musical inside, you know, that was that was not connected to the whole show. It was really important for both of us that it be uh, that it echo some of the heavier, darker themes of the show because they, they really tackle a lot of deep and authentic issues, which is why I think the show has been so successful and so popular. Um, we just found out it's been streamed 17 billion times on TikTok alone. Um, and uh, yeah, it, uh, so anyway, so, it, and I think, but because it, I think because of its authenticity and its playfulness, so we had to echo those themes inside this American songbook kind of musical. And that to me is one of the most gratifying things is that we were able to take these dark issues of identity and abuse and feminist issues and and the main characters who for whom their relationships and marriage specifically has been uh oppressive um 
and then make it funny and put it into this kind of wickedly funny earworm uh, that has gone viral itself. Uh, and uh, it, so, yeah, we've it's, that was particularly gratifying, especially because my mom was a stand-up comedian who did the same kinds of things. She was she was the first woman to perform at the comedy store. She took heavy issues and made them funny. So it felt something of an homage to her. And also, by the way, I just have to mention that uh, those were my grandmother's evil older sister's last words to me. Marriage sure. is a dungeon. <laughs> wow. That's really, that's really meaningful. Ben, what about you? What is this, how did this song come about in your mind when you first decided, Roy, we're going to create this song? Well, we were sort of, uh, we were tasked with um, creating this kind of like Victorian Jane Austen style musical. And I grew up uh, playing, uh, um, listening to a lot of musical theater and music directing. I was a music director at the Second City Hollywood, an improv, a famous improv comedy theater. Um, so I've improvised musicals with performers like Keegan Michael Key and Jim Belushi, um, and I, I uh, had sort of like the tenets of of musicals are sort of in my mind, and it's kind of like a deep part of my core of music I love, particularly Stephen Sondheim. Um, so getting to finally put those uh, those tools to use in like a big in like a big more thought out way than like say an improvised musical. And then for that to be seen by so many people, and then for that to be uh, appreciated by so many people <laughs> that we got an Emmy nomination for it is really just like a wild thing. I mean, a musical theater is is just something that I've been involved with my whole life because I'm a pianist and 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 as a jazz pianist and one who like tends to listen and accompany a lot. That was a lot of my early work was in musical theater, and so to just get to use those muscles uh, in this type of setting. Um, was really was really meaningful for me. You know what's really interesting is you both come from different backgrounds musically. Um, Lily, how does your experience, like as a really renowned solo violinist, um, inform your approach to composing for film and TV, and then also on a song like this one? Well, melody is my core. I, I, it comes to it's just very natural. Uh, so, and words take on melodies and I also I have a, a solo artist I mean I'm, I'm also a singer songwriter I've had a, done yep. a bunch of solo records and actually uh, won a Grammy a couple of years ago yes, uh, and, uh, yeah. and have um, and so so the kind of confluence of classical music from which I was raised with pop sensibilities really uh, sort of and then also I was an actress when I was a child so I relate to things dramatically in a way and emotionally so the kind of confluence of all these influences makes scoring for television and film extremely natural to me I, I emotionally I, I'm like I hang on every breath um, and uh, and then writing songs, and especially musical theater, I think is especially natural coming from classical and pop, and you know, with the viol you know, the violin background. Uh, it it turns out that since we've done this, I haven't stopped being able to. I haven't stopped singing to the cat. So it's <laughs> <laughs> oh good, I singing it was everywhere just, all the time. Yeah, I sing to the cats and the dog a lot. Um, Ben. Final question is like, you know, I just think it's so appropriate for a show like Ginny and Georgia to lean into the, uh, you know, American songbook and musical theatre genre and speak to a younger generation, particularly on TikTok and other social media. Would there be scope, do you think, on this show to revisit this and do another musical or maybe do the same musical again? Um, OK, so this is the part where I have to talk about how um, because I went to high school with Sarah Lampert. Uh, and this this show is largely influenced by the high school that I actually went to. <laughs> that high school was a very, very theater driven high school. There were like 10 shows a year um, and they were mostly student directed. It was a public high school in the Boston area that had just this amazing theater program. And so that's part of the reason why. I had a feeling that there would be a musical in every season. I don't want to guarantee that because I'm not sure what they have timeline wise planned out the seasons three and four. Um, but uh, I have I have a strong feeling that there will be more musical theater at the high school, if only because 
our experience going to that high school, Newton North High School, by the way, uh, was that was such a big part of our our lives. And and I know that Sarah, who's just you know created this brilliant show, um, she uh, she's drawing a lot from personal experience, just like every writer, you know, in the world creation and everything like that. So that that's part of my theory, and I I can't wait to do more. And and I'm not sure what genre it'll be because I have a feeling it's going to be different every time. That would be my, those would be my guesses. Uh, this has to happen. Uh, memo to Sarah Lambert, please make that happen. Um, if <laughs> nothing else, so we can get Ben and Lee another Emmy nomination. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll bring you back for our group panel shortly. Great. Thanks.